Good morning, Mets fans, and happy Wednesday. Welcome to Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met. I was uh, absent so far this week. Uh, I was out of town. I actually recorded a video on Sunday because I knew I wasn't going to be able to record anything until today. And uh, I recorded it like late in the afternoon on Sunday, and I was going to post it Sunday night. And just as I was sitting down to, to render the video, I saw the Ramos news break. So um, I felt like it was it was sort of pointless to post what I talked about because a lot of it had to do with not signing JT Real Muto um, and speculation about that rumor mill, blah blah blah. So the good news is is the Mets are not going after JT Real Muto. Instead, they signed Wilson Ramos. I'm going to talk about that today and uh, prep for the uh, the next couple of days as we. Uh, wind down the end of 2018. Do not adjust your screen. Yes, this is an ugly Mets Christmas sweater. Because uh, of course it is. Uh, <laughs> we have our Christmas party today at the office, so I'm wearing my Mets sweater, uh, of course. Um, but back to the whole point of uh, this video. Wilson Ramos is now a New York Met. That means one. That means two things, um, more than two actually, but two explicitly. Number one, we can stop finally hearing about how ridiculously J Derek Jeter wants some team to overpay for JT Realmuto. Good riddance. I hope he doesn't get anything for him. I hope he ends up getting a bucket of balls for him, or he has to hold on to him and deal with a pit player that doesn't want to be there. Um, that's number one with Realmuto. Number two. Um, Travis Darno and or Kevin Ploiecki may now be expendable. So the Mets now have a everyday catcher. Asterisk next to that because Ramos does have a little bit of an injury history. I shouldn't even say a little bit. He, he is an injury risk, um, is, is Ramos. But the upside is, and this is sort of another, maybe a, a number, number three, um, if Ramos is on the Mets, he can't kill the Mets. And he always, always, always killed the Mets. So I, I love this deal. Uh, when I saw it break on Sunday afternoon, I was like, damn, Brody, you tricked us all. All we were hearing about was Real Muto, Real Muto, Real Muto. And then on either Friday or Saturday, there were some hints dropped like, yeah, the Mets are kind of stepping away from the trade talks with Miami. And now they're looking at Yasmani Grandal. And then boom, all of a sudden, they announced Ramos. Two years, $19 million, very reasonable contract, um, nine and a half million a year, not terrible. I don't think it splits evenly like that. There's probably like a, you know, a little bit more this year, a little bit less next year, one of those sort of deals. Um, but on average, nine and a half million a year, not a bad contract at all um, for a guy who uh, fills a lot of holes. Uh, he is a, uh, he is a power hitter. Um, again, I already mentioned he's, he's got a potential with an injury history, uh, but he is a power hitter. He bats right-handed. He can split up some of the lefty bats that the Mets are going to have in the lineup until Alonzo is ready to do that himself. Um, and, uh, you, you know, they didn't have to part with any of their major league pieces. They didn't have to part with a draft pick that they would have had to part with by signing Grandal. This is just a money purchase, a money acquisition, and it is brilliant. And Brody Van Wagenen, again, again, um, has, has fooled us all. And it's why I laugh when I read on Twitter, same old Mets, same old Mets. It's the Wilpons doing everything that the Wilpons do. Why don't we wait and see what happens? Because just this morning, a little bit ago, I saw Mike Puma tweeted that the Mets might be investigating Mike Moustakis to play third base. I mean, who are these New York Mets? I, I love it. I love the aggressiveness. I love the... I, I love that Brody Van Wagenen seems to be in on everything. Coming off of the Sandy Alderson regime where <clears throat> Sandy was content sitting back and letting the market develop and le letting the market get set up and then finding bargains in that market. And that was fine. Um, you know, I didn't have a problem with that strategy. It, 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 it seemed to work out for him uh, previously. Didn't work out so great for him with the Mets, but you know, whatever. It is a strategy. Brody's the complete opposite, where he's actually setting the market. I mean, he went out and he signed Familia, the 10-year, $30 million deal. He set the market for relief pitchers. 
He went out and signed Ramos before waiting for Grandal to sign, before waiting for Real Muto to be traded and perhaps sign an extension with a team. He goes out and he signs the player that he wants. He sets the market for that position or that type of player. It's, it's very aggressive. It's different than anything we've seen here in New York since Omar Minaya was the general manager. And I, I'm loving it. I'm loving that the Mets are, are relevant again. Um, I love the swagger that Van Wagenen has. I mean, yesterday at the press conference, he announces that internally we feel that we are the team to beat uh, in the National League East. Um, I, 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 I'm a little bit cautious, a little bit hesitant of, of that. Um, that. That phrase has come back to snakebite the Mets in the past. Um, 2007, 2008, but I, I do love the swagger. I love the attitude, and I don't know that I would quite christen the Mets the team to beat yet in the National League East, but I think the NL East is going to be a hell of a competitive division this year, and right now, at this moment, without any additional changes, trades, additions, um, tra uh, uh, acquisitions, whatever, um, the Mets are in a way better position than they were at this point last season. And that's all you can ask the general manager to do. Put the team in a better position to win. It's up to the players then, at that point. But the general manager first has to assemble the team, and I think Brody's done a great job with that. So, um, what's next for the Mets? Who knows? I mean, I don't, I, despite what everyone on Twitter thinks and believes and wants to talk about, I don't think Brody's done changing this, this roster at all. I think there's gonna be more bullpen pieces added, and I think that the, the, just the fact that they're floating the Mike Puma, um, the Mike Mike Puma is floating the Mike Moustakis thing out there, is is just fantastic to hear, because it's proving it's sort of proving to everybody that this guy it, he he is going to stick to his words. He said, "Watch what I do. I'm going to back up every word I say." And so far, he's been spot on with that, and I for one love it. So. Um, that's going to wrap it up for today. Uh, two more days in this week before uh, Christmas. Um, I am going to be off all of next week. So I don't know what that means for uh, the video schedule. There might be a might be a hiatus, might be like a vacation or something. Um, but if there's worthwhile news to discuss or talk about, uh, I'll, I'll find some time next week to record. But I think I'll probably get one more video in this week regardless. So that being said... I'll probably talk to you guys again on uh, on Friday. Until then, I appreciate you watching. Thanks so much. Follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always, let's go Mets. <laughs>